Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie. Today, it's another hot one in Colorado, and Rafiki and I are figuring out the best strategy to stay cool in this arid climate. Hopefully, you are staying cool as well. And speaking of strategies, we've got another interesting strategy from the EV giant Tesla to detail and analyze today. Tesla is now offering a portion of their EVs to customers that do qualify for the U.S. federal tax credit and another lot of EVs that do not qualify for the U.S. federal tax credit due to the batteries inside of them. In other words, Tesla's battery choices are based on whether you, as the buyer and the customers, qualify or choose to take advantage of the federal EV tax credit. If you think you're getting the same top-tier battery, regardless of your tax credit status, you might want to think again. Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, so last time I was here talking about Tesla, we were talking about the federal tax credit with the Model 3 long range and how that became available to that EV because of the batteries inside of it. So what has changed? Well, technically nothing, but here's more information about what Tesla is doing. Uh, So the same models that we talked about before are eligible for the EV tax credit, and I'll repeat those later in case you're curious. But I'm also interested in covering this because of the, the larger EV market, the strategy that Tesla is employing, and also the fairness of battery chemistry and the batteries that you get in your EV. So the background here is that Tesla is producing in the U.S. different variants of their Model Y and their Model 3 EVs that either qualify or do not qualify for the $7,500 EV tax credit. So the type of battery your Tesla comes with depends on which, on if you're eligible for the credit and if you choose to take the credit. The Model Y long range and the Model 3 long range will come with the Panasonic batteries. So those are for the qualifying EV tax credit EVs and customers. These batteries are generally known for their higher performance, their better range, their faster charging times. And on the other hand, the non-qualifying models and the customers who do not take advantage of the EV tax credit, Tesla will give you a car with the LG batteries. While still functional and fine, they are cheaper for Tesla. And these batteries don't totally match up uh, compared to Panasonic's in terms of performance and efficiency. So there is a distinction in quality here and performance. And when it comes to EVs, a lot of us probably listening about the battery. And I think a lot of us should. I think it should be more transparent about the battery chemistry just because I love more and more information. But, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have different opinions on that. Should I really know the battery chemistry within my EV? Personally, I think, yeah. So the customer impact. If you have the qualifying EV tax credit with the Panasonic batteries, they are generally going to offer a better driving experience with more extended range and faster charging. And then customers without the credit end up with the lower performance batteries, which feels like a second tier product. But uh, from a business standpoint, Tesla is optimizing things. They're cutting costs. And that is a strategic move and has been kind of framed as a smart move. But the question of fairness comes into play as well. So Tesla is saving the company money, but it does raise questions about customer satisfaction and customer experiences across the board. Is it right to provide a lower quality product based on a customer's tax status? Because from Tesla's point of view, or any automaker really, if a customer is not claiming or cannot claim the EV tax credit, why make all of the EVs eligible for the tax credit? What do you think about that? Is it only Tesla that can really do this at this point in time? We've had podcasts before breaking down the U.S. government's, the federal government's tariffs on imported goods that are either EVs or lithium-ion batteries for EVs or critical minerals that are used in EVs, and also the requirements of the federal EV tax credit. It can be a little bit complicated, but once you read it over a few times, you can get it. So we have podcasts about that, but I'll briefly go over that in case you are curious. Tesla, though, is being pretty clear with which EVs are eligible and which are not. If you go to their inventory site, which I'll pull up right now, if you are tuning in on video on YouTube, their inventory site, you can put in a zip code, you can search within a few, however many miles, and then you can decide your model for a new car. 
And then you can toggle on this, this option, tax credit eligible vehicles. And then all the inventory that is eligible will come up. Additionally, they have uh, criteria available, EV incentives for new vehicles. So they have some information here about the federal tax credit, the $7,500 business tax credit, and then they've got some leases as well. And then of course, you should always look into what your state offers uh, in terms of incentives with EVs, maybe even your utilities, maybe there are grassroots organizations, and also talk to your dealer. They should know about this stuff, and if they don't, shame on them, point them in the right direction, and check with the IRS as well to make sure that you know what you qualify for. Educate yourself. Be curious. Have fun. Because while I strive to give you all the facts and figures and information that you could need, it's important to also educate yourself and double check things. So for the federal EV tax credit eligibility to qualify for it in 2024, this year, you some criteria has to be met. So there are income, income limits, $300,000 for married couples filing jointly, $225,000 for head of households, and then $150,000 for all other filers. For price caps, there's an $80,000 price cap on SUVs and trucks, and there is a $55,000 price cap on all other vehicles. There's also battery requirements, of course. At least 50% of materials must come from North America, and 60% of the battery components must be assembled in North America. As of 2024, there are several Tesla models that qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit, and these include the Model 3 Performance, the Model Y rear wheel drive, the Model Y long range all wheel drive, the Model Y performance, and the Model X long range. It's important with the Model X that the price does not exceed $80,000, which it easily can, because that would cap the price and it can't be more than that. So the eligibility, eligibility cr criteria for these tax credits are based on these new guidelines in 2024. They did change from 2023 to 2024, so we're keeping you up to date here. I would like to also give just a brief background on the overview of batteries used in Tesla products. We've got the Panasonic 2170 batteries, widely used in the Model 3 and the Model Y. These batteries are praised for reliability, higher energy density, um, a balance between performance and range, and customers tend to appreciate the consistency in these batteries in different driving conditions. For the Tesla 4680 batteries, these are not really a fan favorite. People don't really like the charging performance of the 4680, especially the first generation that were in some Model Ys, which are discontinued now. And it is the cause, these batteries are the cause of the worse than expected charging performance in the Tesla Cybertruck as well. But it uses a newer generation of the 4680 cells. So for LG Kim batteries, these quote unquote, Second tier, the ones that you'll get if you are not eligible and not taking advantage of the federal EV tax credit, the non-qualified EVs that Tesla is offering. These are used in the Model 3 and Model Y variants, and they're noted for being a more cost-effective option. If you're a business and if you're Tesla, you're definitely going for cost-effective options. So they might offer a slightly lower performance compared to Panasonic's, but it's still a, a good battery. It's pretty robust. It's an efficient solution for many customers. And these batteries are also of the 2170 cylindrical shape as the Panasonic batteries, but rather than being produced in the Giga Nevada or Nevada, I don't know which one y'all prefer, but I'll say both, they are produced in China instead. And these batteries are also what Europeans get when they order a long-range Model Y or Model 3. LG does have plans to build factories in the U.S., but at this point they don't have any. Uh, but meanwhile, they supply to Tesla from their Chinese factory, both to U.S. and Chinese Tesla factories. And then they also supply to Giga Berlin. LFP, lithium iron phosphate batteries, these are primarily used in the Tesla Model 3 base model. These batteries are known for their safety, longevity, their lower cost. You can charge them to 100% and not worry. Otherwise, you should kind of worry about battery degradation. They're just a bit more durable. And they have slightly lower energy density, but are preferred by some consumers who just want to prioritize that longevity and safety over the maximum range that it can give you. Okay, so why did I cover this? Again, I think it's a good look at this strategy with all the regulation, with all the tariffs, with the global politics and the global economies involved in the EV world. EV manufacturers will have to find ways to fit their products into the social, political sphere in which they are manufacturing, producing, selling, distributing their EVs. Tesla has been around a while, 
They've been playing this game for a while. They have a bit of a leg up, whether you like it or not. We will see similar approaches from automakers in the U.S., right? What do you think? Would love to know what y'all think. But is it fair also? If you care about the battery in your Tesla and you don't get the tax credit, what do you think of the other battery that you get? Does it really matter? Let me know in the comments. From a business standpoint, it definitely makes sense. They're optimizing manufacturing costs by reducing them. They are offering different pricing structures and then production costs, I'm sure. They're, it's, it's all in their interest, right? While maintaining a supply of both qualifying and non-qualifying vehicles. Because again, if not everyone is claiming the tax credit, should EV manufacturers be making them only in the way that they qualify for the U.S. federal EV tax credit. I would love to know what you all think. I think it's kind of something that should make us think a little bit. It's not just a smart business move. It does affect the consumers in the long run. I'm not sure how much priority Tesla really places on the equity amongst its buyers' experiences. So I think this is just where we can chime in and talk about it. Thanks again for plugging into the Out of Spec podcast for today's episode. I think we kind of touched on why Tesla's decision to use different batteries based on tax credit eligibility is a double-edged sword and should be looked at a little bit in depth while it helps the company manage costs, comply with regulations. It also has the potential to create a disparity in customers' experience. Tesla is an innovator. It'll be interesting to see how they address these concerns and ensure that all customers feel valued. But again, like I said, I'm not sure how much of a priority that is. We'll also see if other automakers employ a similar kind of strategy. Okay. Like I said, let me know what you think in the comments. Share it out if you think it's interesting. Definitely give us a like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on the next episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. Drive safe, stay charged. Bye-bye, y'all.